So what do you think about the situation with ATBI, which is Activision? Microsoft is buying them for $95 a share unless something happens. At $79.25 a share right now, articles give it a 2023 close for the deal. I would have to hold it for a while. That's a $15.75 a share profit or a 19.87% return. Very precise. What are the downsides to this when the situation comes up? Thanks, Katie. So, Andrew, what are your thoughts on Katie's really good question? This is kind of an interesting situation. It's a really good learning opportunity because a lot of these, it's called M&A or mergers and acquisitions. A lot of these acquisitions tend to happen at higher prices than lower. So as an example, Activision, when the deal got announced, their price shot up. I mean, if I pull up a chart, they went from like 65 range to like the 80 range. So you'll see that a lot, you know, 20%, 30%, 50%, 100% gains because a company is paying more for the smaller company. So where you see something interesting though, is like you said, Microsoft's buying at a dollar amount per share, but the actual stock price for Activision is less. So you could buy Activision and then like Katie said in the question, just wait for the deal to close and you get that difference, which is close to 20% right now, according to these numbers. But, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch on Wall Street. And so that's referred to as like an arbitrage play. And what you get, if you're right, is that nice 20% in a really short time period. What you get if you're wrong is the stock dropping from where it was up by 80 down to back where it was before the deal was made down to like the 60s. So there's no guarantee that the deals will go through and you'll see deals go through and, and you'll see deals not go through. So it really depends on you know, antitrust issues being sorted out through courts, not just in the United States, but any other countries that they're involved in. So you don't get this 20% for free if you're buying Activision to wait for the price to rise when the deal closes. So always keep that in mind because that's what you'll see pretty much every time. And if there's not that much return, so if that spread is smaller, that means that people probably think the deal is going to go through. But the bigger the spread, the more risks there are for the deal to fall through. And so high risk, high reward. So it's a cliche, but a lot of times it's true. Yeah, it is true. And I think one of the biggest risks, which is what Andrew highlighted with this, is probably the regulatory concerns and whether the regulators are going to allow this merger or this acquisition to happen. And you've been seeing more and more pushback recently, particularly with big tech buying other big tech. And there was a deal with NVIDIA buying a company in England called Arm. And there was a lot of concern that that deal was not going to go through and it ended up falling apart. The regulators kind of put a kibosh on it and eventually NVIDIA backed out. And so there is some serious concern about this with Activision. And the other thing that Andrew was kind of alluding to with the legal issues is Activision has had some bumps in a row, shall we say, uh, recently with the, I guess, company culture in the company. And a rumor had it that the CEO that founded the company is going to step down once the acquisition is complete. And then the person running the gaming division at Microsoft would take over, in essence, that position. And, you know, I think some of the the whole blue about everything that was going on in the company with the culture has kind of died down a little bit, be, probably because of the of the acquisition. But it doesn't mean that, that that's going to stay hidden or you know subdued before the merger happens. And there could be some pushback on Microsoft because of some of these issues. And whether or not that legally comes up, that could be something that delays the deal getting finished. It also could really tank the stock of Activision before the merger. And so that's something that you have to be cognizant of as well, which would be great if the company is able to buy it at 95 and the share drops, that's a, you know, that potentially could be a bigger spread for you. But there are certainly some risks to consider with this. I know we say it a lot, but it really comes down to, do you believe in the business or not? And do you believe in it long-term or not? So if you look at a company like Activision Blizzard, 
if you're going to buy to try to make that arbitrage trade, I mean, this, this is the way I invest. I always try to take the worst case scenario. And I think if that worst case scenario plays out, how am I going to, am I going to be okay with it? So in this case, if the deal falls through, the stock crashes back down to the 60s range. But if you're still okay holding this company the next five, 10 years, then no sweat off your back, right? But if you're kind of unsure about the culture problem that's been very public in the company and, and what that's done to the talent pool there, and if Microsoft's not able to come in and basically they're, they're taking the IP and integrating that into their, their own talent pool. So if Activision doesn't have that anymore, is it going to be as great of an investment? Is that going to be as great of an investment if the deal falls through? Even if you might really like the company or you really, really might like the games. Again, like Dave was saying, what if there's more stuff that comes out about people, more people in the Activision company? that makes Microsoft pull out. And then you have, and now you're stuck with a company that could be potentially even more ugly than not. So, you know, there's no perfect answer for anybody. And it all depends on how you feel about the companies and, and how you feel about their financial information. And so those are, I guess, some things to think about when it comes to, you know, you, you can try to play arbitrage games all day long with the stock market. It'll probably drive you crazy. Uh, I can tell you that really kind of focusing more on the long-term stuff is really beneficial because then you're not stuck having to really root for one thing or the other.